So now we're gonna hit what's called a hasty astro. This is where we can use the sun or the stars to actually give us a grid azimuth from our known position. So first thing you're gonna need is an actual grid to what you're over, preferably a 10 digit with the decimal places. So you have a hub in the deck, something to make sure that you have a position for. You get plumb, you get level over it, and then you need to select one of the stars you're gonna use. Obviously during the day, the only star you can use is gonna be the sun. At nighttime, you go into the RTHD software, and I believe there's something like 73 stars that you can pick from. So you can use a star chart, or if you have the constellations memorized, that also helps. So anyway, I have my recorder here. They're gonna have a dagger and they're gonna be using it for time. So I'm gonna look at the sun. I'm gonna say tracking, tracking, tracking three times. And once I'm directly sighted in and where I wanna be, I'm gonna say tip. Upon tip, I'm gonna take my hands off. He's gonna say tip out. And he's gonna record the time at the exact time that I said tip from the dagger. After he says that, I'm going to bring my scope back to the ground about 100 meters away. I'm not going to be turning it left or right. I'm simply using the vertical motion. And I'm going to send somebody out with a stake. And I'm going to use hand and arm signals for them to get directly in line with my crosshairs. So I'm moving them to get into my crosshairs. I'm not using, moving my crosshairs to get to them. Once it's in the deck, I tell them to put it in the ground. They come on back, and then I can go back to the sun and track it one more time. So again, I'd go back to the sun. I'd get on my upper motion, tracking, tracking, tip, tip out. My recorder would then record the time once again, and I would read off my scale reading. So at that time, my first reading should have been zero, and my second reading it's going to be what's called my check angle, and I compare that with the computations. So now I'll do an example for you. First thing I'm going to do is set my upper motion to 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. zero, 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 point zero. Now with my lower motion, I'm going to sight in and track the sun. So I'm gonna use the shadows on the aiming circle. Tell me roughly where the sun is. Once I get it, I can put my hand in here without burning my eyeballs out. And I can see that the sun is magnifying onto my hand. So once I get that, so now that I have the sun, I take the sunshade off the side and I put that onto the scope so that I can actually look through this scope and see the sun. So again, I'm still using my lower motion. I can use the vertical as well. And beforehand, I want to select whether I'm using tracking, leading, or center. So typically for the aiming circle, it's best to use center. So I'll be getting as centered as possible. And once I think I'm close to where I'm actually moving with the sun and my fine point of aim, I'll say tracking, 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 tip. And I take my hands off and that's when my recorder says tip out at that exact moment and records the time. That's the hours, minutes, seconds in GMT. So once he has that, we look at my scales, they should still be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. That's what we want. So I'll close my lower motion. I'm gonna take my sun filter off and without moving my horizontal scales, I'm gonna bring my scope to the deck. So I wanna side in roughly 100 meters away About there, then my runner is gonna have a stake and they're gonna have a hammer and they're gonna go out to where I'm aiming at and they're going to emplace this stake as level and as plumb as possible exactly where I'm aiming. 
I'm going to use hand and arm signals to tell them where to go. If we're doing this at nighttime, I could have a glow stick in each hand and I'm still doing the same arm and hand signals. And once they're good and that stake is in place, then what I'm doing is I'm switching to my upper motion and I'm going to turn back to the sun and track again. So I have to find the sun first. And once I think I have it, I put my sun filter back on. I look through and using my vertical and upper motion, I track the sun. So I go tracking, 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 tip, take my hands off, tip out. My recorder again records the time that I said tip, hours, minutes, seconds, GMT time. Once the recorder has that information, then we're going to read off my final scale reading. Uh, for example, mine is 0055.5. That means my manual check angle is 0055.5. That's the distance the sun moved between my first and second measurement. So then my recorder takes that information, puts it into the RTHD computer, computes it, and what that gives is a grid azimuth to the stake that we just put out. So here we have the field recorder's notebook page. What the recorder is going to do is take the circled information that you can see here, so from the remarks, the date, and then the actual time and uh, horizontal measurements, he's going to copy that into a hasty astro nav mag form right here. So he simply copy pastes it. Then in the remarks section, he puts the second horizontal reading, so that's going to be your instrument's check angle, and we're going to bump that with the computed check angle. So he inputs this all into the RTHD, presses calculate, and it gives you a grid azimuth of that stake you put out and the computed check angle. So the computed check angle and that grid azimuth are going to get recorded back on the field recorder's notebook page. And then you just simply verify that the two check angles are within tolerance and you're all set. So what we're going to do is take that check angle I got off the scales and the check angle that the RTHD outputs. And they need to be within a plus or minus 10 mil tolerance of each other. And if they are then that means that's a good azimuth, a good hasty azimuth to use. And that's it as far as hasty astro.